Despite having lost out sales-wise to Sony's PlayStation console, the Nintendo 64 packed a surprising number of gems across a small library. Let's jump right into the top 12 games for the N64. Starting out with a controversial pick at number 12, WCW vs. NWO World Tour. I'm gonna go ahead and say it, there are a lot of better games on the N64 that didn't make this list. In an effort to capture the variety of game types that made the N64 such a blast to play back in the 90s, I've tried my best to limit entries to one game per genre. WCW vs. NWO represents the wide array of great wrestling titles on the system. One of my first memories of the N64 was playing tag matches in this game at a friend's birthday party. After Mario 64, this was one of the first titles I picked up for the system, and it remained a multiplayer favorite in my family for the lifetime of the N64. Next up at number 11, a personal favorite of mine, Jet Force Gemini. Might as well get all the controversial ones out of the way fast. Jet Force Gemini takes a lot of flack for sending you on an epic fetch quest to gather Ewoks and ship parts before you can face off with the evil Mizar. I won't act like that doesn't sometimes feel like a chore, but Gemini goes about it in a very interesting way. Before hitting that point in the game, you take on the role of each member of the Jet Force Gemini individually. Basically, two tweens and a dog. Each character has a unique story path that eventually converges with the other two. Once you have access to all three characters, new areas, and even entirely new types of play open up to you. Modern gamers will definitely find themselves wrestling with the game's unusual controls, but Jet Force Gemini is rewarding enough to make it worth the learning curve. Flying in at number 10, Star Fox 64. Few are going to argue that Star Fox 64 isn't a terrific game, but you might find those that object to what's essentially an enhanced remake making its way onto this top 12, especially when we have other excellent examples of the aerial shooter that have been left off this list. That's a valid criticism to be sure, but Star Fox 64 is so much more than a shiny coat of paint on what was already a visually impressive title for the Super Nintendo. Star Fox 64 adds new vehicles, updated controls, and a surprisingly enjoyable multiplayer mode, all in addition to the fact that the updated graphics, better frame rate, and voice acting add up to perhaps the finest Star Fox experience we've gotten so far. Fighting its way to number 9, the original Super Smash Bros. In the years since this debut, Smash Bros has become one of Nintendo's biggest and most anticipated franchises each generation. Without the benefit of trial and error, the original Smash Bros. does feel a little unrefined in comparison with later entries. In a sense, that almost works to its benefit as a party game. It's certainly not the competitive darling that Melee would become, but it also enjoyed the absolute novelty of smashing all these huge franchises together for an absolute free-for-all. Love it or hate it, this is Smash Bros. Cutting its way in at number 8, Paper Mario. While it was the first to bear the name Paper Mario in the West, it would be disingenuous to pretend that this game is the same sort of original property we just saw in Super Smash Bros. Paper Mario, or Mario Story as it's known in Japan, is a continuation of the excellent Super Mario RPG on the SNES. That said, Paper Mario takes large strides to distinguish itself from RPG and lay the foundation for the series to come. In a couple of ways, Paper Mario is one of the best games on the N64. The visuals are lovely, crisp, and have certainly held up better than some of the more ambitious polygonal looks we've seen on the list today. The combat is simple, but it builds on itself as you gather more partners and star powers. Regions on the map tend to be a little generic in concept, but they lead to dungeons and boss battles that wouldn't feel out of place in a Zelda title. Paper Mario set the stage for Thousand Year Door to take the series to new heights. At number 7, F-Zero. X. Following up on another series starting on the Super Nintendo, F-Zero X builds on its own predecessor in impressive ways. Keeping things simple visually, F-Zero X targets a silky smooth frame rate that adds to the blazing sense of speed the game delivers. It's this edge in performance that puts X a cut above the other top-notch futuristic racers on the platform. But it's not the only way that F-Zero X improves on the original. While F-Zero had an awesome soundtrack, X takes these heavy metal gems to the next level. There's a wide variety of modes and a ton of available racers. Despite the simplistic look, the course design in F-Zero X really shows the difference that dedicated 3D hardware can have for a racing title. Speaking of racing titles... Cutting ahead of F-Zero at number 6, Mario Kart 64. This is another example of an exceptional game being edged out of this list for too closely resembling another title. Diddy Kong Racing from Rare is perhaps the better game, but Mario Kart 64 is certainly the more iconic kart racer. Just as with F-Zero, Paper Mario, and Star Fox 64, 
This title did wonders in demonstrating the leap that gamers were taking from the 16-bit Super Nintendo to the N64. Mario Kart 64 upped the ante on multiplayer with four-player split-screen. It introduced some of the series' most cherished fan-favorite courses and also the much-maligned fake item boxes and blue shells. And now it's time that we break the rules a bit. Shooting its way up the list to number five, Perfect Dark. Perfect Dark is very much the spiritual successor to GoldenEye, so it might feel like cheating to place it on this list when so many other great games have been left out for feeling too close to another entry. But let's face it, we're in the top five now. All bets are off. Having had a few more years working with the N64 by the time Perfect Dark came out, this game is a big improvement visually over GoldenEye. Some of the lighting and reflection effects still look pretty cool today, and Rare even threw in a high-res mode to make it look even shinier at the cost of a frame rate that really chugs along, the glorious heights of 480i. As an original IP, Rare had a lot of fun with the dark futuristic setting and sci-fi overtones. They even threw in a two-player co-op mode akin to Rainbow Six on the N64. The gameplay might not be perfect, but it's still a whole lot of fun. At number four from Rare, Banjo-Kazooie. To continue a theme, here's another Rare title that would have been shut out of this list on a technicality had it not simply been too good to be denied. While Super Mario 64 laid the groundwork for all future 3D platformers, Banjo-Kazooie took the best bits and improved on the formula. The controls feel ever so slightly less floaty, and there's more moves for this duo to pull off once they've all been unlocked. There are more ways to unlock new levels and areas of the hub world, making the whole experience feel more connected than in Peach's Castle. Banjo-Kazooie does a better job of slowly introducing the player to new concepts, and the fact that getting a puzzle piece doesn't send you back to the hub world every time you get one means you can conquer multiple objectives at once. The foundation was already there, but Banjo-Kazooie makes for one hell of a house. Coming in at number three, the legendary multiplayer classic, Goldeneye. Now we get to the reason that Perfect Dark was a bit of a cheat to put on this list. While the graphics and gameplay have aged in a way that few would describe as graceful, there's still a fantastic game in Goldeneye for those willing to recalibrate. Enough has already been said about the phenomenon its multiplayer was at the time, but the part that's held up better retrospectively is the excellent campaign. Goldeneye captures many of the most memorable moments of the film, with a few additions along the way, and keeps things fresh with a variety of objectives. Sure, there's the escort mission with Natalia that will drive you straight up the wall every time she bites the bullet, but at least you get to listen to some groovy tunes every time you restart. Oh yeah. Beyond that, let's admit that there are still few better feelings than stepping into the role of gentleman spy, taking some names, and getting the babe. Speaking of getting the babe, up next at number two, Super Mario 64. Everyone's favorite ladies' man and Italian plumber is back, and this time, there's no Luigi along for the ride. Before Super Mario 64, most game developers were still trying to figure out exactly how characters should move in 3D. There were some interesting examples, and Crash came pretty close, but it was ultimately the same guy who set the bar for 2D platformers who did so for 3D. Beyond the controls, it feels a bit repetitive to keep mentioning what an experience it was to see your favorite Nintendo characters realized in 3D, but the impact really can't be overstated. The real lasting innovation of Mario 64 has to be the open sandbox playstyle that we're so familiar with in modern gaming. While there are those that have done it better since Super Mario 64, Nintendo did a damn fine job right out of the gate with what may be the best all-time launch title before Breath of the Wild. And now it's time for the final title on our list. After all, there could only ever be one, Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. I'm gonna go ahead and admit, Ocarina of Time is not my favorite Zelda on the N64, but I'm not gonna sit here and deny either its influence or the fact that it just might be the best game on the system. Just as Mario 64 redefined what a platformer was in the age of 3D graphics, Ocarina set in place conventions in 3D adventure titles that are still observed to this day. It's apparent right from your start that you're in for something special with Ocarina, but it's not until you step out into Hyrule Field and start to explore the open, if linear, world map that it starts to become apparent just what a big departure this game was from anything we'd played in the past. The use of multiple timelines, a magical instrument that can alter the way time flows, fantastic dungeons, and a landscape filled with diverse and interesting cultures are just some of the things that make Ocarina of Time one of a kind. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this top 12 list, and I'll see you all in the next Retro Tech Select.